You're listening to Real Conversations, where every week we take a peek at the favorite movies of fascinating people. Real Conversations is hosted by Brian Coley, the founder of Art Within and Real. Today, Brian sits down with Lee Jenkins. Lee is the president of Lee Jenkins Group, a ministry outreach, financial education, and consulting firm. He is also the founder and senior pastor of Eagle's Nest Church in Roswell, Georgia, and the Atlanta executive director of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. You can find Lee at leejenkinsgroup.com. Lee, thanks for being uh, in the real studios today with us. Great to be here, Brian. All right, so uh, usually we start out with just going right into your top 10 and letting people know what's on your top 10 list. So why don't you walk everybody through what's on your top 10? Okay, my top 10 list is the movie Glory. All right, yeah. Uh, Remember the Titans. Oh, we got two Denzel there. Yes, two Denzel. By the way, he is my favorite actor, (laughs) by the way. And and people might have said sometime in your past that you look a little like Denzel, right? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people (laughs) tell me that, and it is quite a compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So um, Blood Down. Diamond. Oh, that's a good film. Uh, by the way, that. he's my second favorite actor is yeah. Leonardo oh, DiCaprio. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. He got his due this year with yes, the Oscar, he right? he did, finally. Mm-hmm. Jerry Maguire. Yeah? Yes. Show me the money? Yes. <laughs> Scarface. Oh, wow. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> that's my favorite line, man. <laughs> that's nice, yeah. Yes. Al Pacino. Al Pacino is yep. phenomenal in that movie. The Untouchables. All right. Kevin Costner. Little Kevin and, Costner. Uh, yeah, um... And then Notebook. Oh, well, you're wow. uh, you're losing your man card on that. I know I it, man. That was a chick flick that I went to, <laughs> and it came out with tears in my eyes. Really? Man. Oh, yeah. I, I cried at that movie, man. Oh, I must have yeah. told my wife I, I loved her a hundred times after that movie, man. Great <laughs> nice. movie. Good. Coming to America. Coming to America. I, I went back into the mid-80s with Eddie Murphy and oh. Arsenio Hall. Well, and Arsenio was a little fresh face there. Exactly. He was kind of young. Um, uh, great. And then uh, well, an icon to all of culture and to your sophistication as a, <laughs> a pastor and an artist. Uh, what's the next one? Oh, the next one is Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> 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 I mean, man, I don't know. People like Dumb and Dumber? Yes. Yeah. That movie is so funny to me. And it is my all-time favorite classic that's as a comedy. Good. That's good. Believe it or not, it shows up a lot on, on guys' top tens, that's wow, for sure. Oh, that's so, great. And then lastly, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, classic, right? Just a classic. Yep, yep, yep. So pretty eclectic uh, group yeah, here. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. So usually I like to start with uh, what character do you resonate with the most? Like which one do you identify with most on your top ten? Out of all the movies, yeah. the character I identify with the most would be Jerry Maguire. Oh, yeah? Yes. All right, and tell me why. Well, Jerry experienced some adversity in his life. Yeah. He got fired from this agency yeah. he was with, and he kind of hit rock bottom. Right. And he had to uh, restart his, his career mm-hmm. on one client who was Cuba <laughs> Gooden. And, um, yeah. and he became successful. And yeah. so uh, I look at kind of my business career and especially my ministry career. Yeah. And I'm going to yeah. just use my ministry career. Yeah. When I walked away from business, to start a church yeah. in 2012. That's really like a Jerry Maguire that moment, like right? like a Jerry Maguire moment. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, who's going to follow me here? I was talking to my friend, <laughs> you know, trying to get a, a launch team together. Like, right. who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? And a few people <laughs> raised their hands. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and, you know, just starting a church from scratch, being mm-hmm. a church planter, yeah. uh, it just reminded me of, reminded me of Jerry Maguire. Yeah. And, and then just getting excited when a few people, People came and, and you know, I, um, I didn't have to show them the money, but I had to show them the word. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. So, uh, so Jerry Maguire would be the one out of all, all out of all of these. That's cool. Is there a scene that you remember from the movie that kind of sticks out to you? Wow, there are so many scenes in this particular movie, but I'm going to say um, when, wow, I mean, there are so many scenes when he was when he thought he had this big draft choice yeah he uh the uh bob sugarman kind oh, of yeah, came yeah. in behind him you know yeah. the guy sugarman and so jerry Maguire was over the, the, the in the hotel room with the dad and the player yeah. and the dad's son and so you know and then of course uh he found out that the other agent had signed him and it was oh, just yeah. a very big disappointment yeah. and he uh he was just so down you yeah. know he, he came home and uh 
you know, he got drunk. You know, he yeah. went over his you know girlfriend's house, and it was just yeah. a real low moment. But even though it was a low moment, it was the best thing that ever happened to him mm. because he had to really hustle. Yeah, and so that that again that kind of mirrors my life. Yeah, just uh, having some of those moments that I had, yeah. especially back in. Uh, during the economic crisis in the late 2000, 2008, 2009, when my business hit rock bottom and um, and I just had to go to the Lord and say, God, you know, w- what do I do now? Yeah. I mean, after spending almost 25 years in an industry. Wow. 25 so, yeah, years. 25 years. Yeah. That crushed. is a moment where you're like, OK, yeah. I don't, you get disillusioned, right? That's right. So, you know, the disillusionment. Um, and then, of course, this is not he, the way it was supposed to play play out, like like with Jerry Maguire, where he was supposed to get the guy, right? That's exactly yeah. right. He was supposed to get the guy. Yeah. That's right. Huh. So, um, so that's a probably. I mean, there are many other scenes. I'm trying to think of another one, and man, there were so many. Um, but, but I, I would say that's the uh, uh, that's the best scene. Yeah. What would yep. you say is since you relate to him? What would you say Jerry Maguire's most heroic traits are? Wow. I'm going to say courage, yeah, yeah, because it took a lot of courage, and mm-hmm. it takes a lot of courage uh, for me to be in ministry and to do what I did. Yeah. Um, also, uh, he served his clients, so mm. he, he was a servant. He had a servant's heart. Yeah. I mean, he 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 did everything to try to get Cuba good, and you know, to make him happy. Yeah. Um, so he had a servant's heart. Yeah. He had courage, and um, let's see here. I'm going to say he was um, he was just driven. It's very tenacious, yeah. Yeah, tenacious. Yeah, yeah very tenacious. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So those are the three things. Yeah, well, do you see that in your top ten as far as other characters? Obviously, you see that kind of courage and tenacity with, uh, you see it with the Elliot Ness character in Untouchables for sure, right? Absolutely. Uh, you definitely see the courage and tenacity with Saving Private Ryan with yes. uh, the lead character there. You even see a little bit of tenacity with the Dumb and Dumber characters yeah, to really get that do. suitcase, right? That's right. Um, but but really, even even one of the movies I have on here, yeah. which a little su- surprises some people because I'm a pastor, but it's one of my all time favorites, and it's Scarface. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And Al Pacino when yeah. he was uh, uh, doing this role, how he came from nothing. Yeah, I mean, of course, he was doing illegal stuff, right. but that's not the point. Even yeah. in the Bible, I believe it's Luke 16, it talks about the, the shrewd uh, steward, yeah. the, the guy who did some bad things, but, right. but he was very intentional about it. Yes, and so the way he built his drug empire, right, and and how he did what he had to do, man, yeah. there's a lot of business principles to learn. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things when I looked at your top ten, that one of the biggest things I saw was, you know, I don't know if this is God or whatever, but it just kind of laid on me this concept of opportunity. Yes. That, um, you know, you see coming to America, yeah. and it's it's that land of opportunity kind of, I mean, it's kind of cliche, but there's an opportunity aspect of that, you yeah. know, that he's coming for the opportunity right. of what America brings. You see that in Blood Diamond where Leo DiCaprio is there because he's looking for opportunity of what the diamond industry mm-hmm. looks like. Obviously, Jerry Maguire is trying to, to seize whatever opportunity he can. Um, I don't know. And then Scarface is probably the icon of that, yes. right? He's he's coming to America again, you know, another right. coming to America tale. Right. And uh, and kind of just trying to find all that America gives him. Um, what do you think about that? Like, why, why is that such a heavy theme, do you think, in your top ten? I, I like the underdog. Yeah. I like the stories of a person who had to go take what they wanted oh, interesting. in life. Yeah. That just inspires me. Yeah. Whether it's an athletic story. I uh-huh. like overcoming the odds. Yeah. Probably the most powerful scene mm-hmm. out of all of these movies yeah. is Glory. When mm-hmm. Denzel Washington was getting whipped. Oh, with, yeah. Man. And man, the tear came out of his eye. Yeah. And how he would not cry. Mm. He was not going to show them that mm. they could break him. Mm. And man, that was that that might be the best scene I've ever seen wow. in the history of movies. Right, right. You know, because of what it depicted and and the determination and mm. but then the pain and everything. Mm. So uh What so does anyway. that say to you? What what does that scene mean to you? Uh, wow. Wow. It means like what does his tears mean to you really, you know, in the midst of that? Cuz that that's what you pointed to and I think that's probably what 
He won the Oscar. Yeah, he won the Oscar. <laughs> I imagine that was the tears. They won him that Oscar that year. No so. doubt about it. So what do they mean to you? Well, what that meant to me, see, I grew up, um, I'm a child of the civil rights movement. Mm-hmm, My mm-hmm. parents were involved in the civil rights movement. Really? Yes, huh. very much so. This church I went to was a sister church to Ebenezer. Wow. So Dr. Martin Luther King Sr., I'm not telling you, you would come to our church and preach. Really? So I was very steeped in that. And my parents were too. And both of my parents were from South Georgia, very segregated mm-hmm, towns. Mm-hmm. So I would go to visit my grandparents and would hear some awful things wow. just walking down the street. And I was a little kid, man. And, right. you know, and they, so, uh, but one thing my parents instilled in me is that not all people are evil. So don't ever think white people or anybody, don't ever let a few knuckleheads or fools Mm -hmm. determine what you think about an entire group. Mm. And then don't ever let them break you down. In other words, don't go down to their level. Don't allow somebody else's problems, whether it's racism or whether it's uh, just foolishness of any kind, don't come down to that level. So that scene to me, it was Denzel... uh, not letting them break him. Yeah. Um, even, you know, huh. so not to break his spirit. Yeah. Maybe that's a better way yeah. to say it. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he did not let them break his spirit. Yeah. And uh, so it's just a powerful scene. And then, you know, he was in pain and yeah. he was not going to scream and because yeah. he wasn't going to give the people who were dishing out the pain the pleasure yeah. of seeing him yeah. cry out loud. Mm. So that's where the tear came in. Mm-hmm. He was in excruciating pain, wow. but he wasn't going to let... Uh, the oppressors know that. Hmm. Yeah, we can't let our pain be a part of our personhood, you know. Oh, you, that's good. Yes, because you can allow bad experiences or bad people to shape you and make you bitter, and, mm-hmm. and, or, and you just can't do that. What would you say is the thing that, you know, obviously uh, Jesus came into your life at a certain point to change your point of view, uh, but was there anything else that you would say that you could point to to say, I could have been one of those statistics of young African males, Mm -hmm. African American Mm -hmm. males, like what would you say is the difference maker in your life? Well, first of all, my parents, Mm -hmm. Uh, we grew up the first 12 years of my life, which we would call now the projects. Mm -hmm. Most of my friends, uh, and I'm not just saying this, I know this sounds cliche but the guys I grew up with, most of them are in jail or Mm -hmm. dead or, uh, you know, got involved in something really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And this was before they were 21 years old. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some of them before they were 18. Mm -hmm. And so, but my parents, even though we lived in that environment, they always, we would drive around Buckhead. And Buckhead is, you know, of course, an area in Atlanta. So here we lived in the projects. And on Sundays after church, we would get in the car and my mother and my father would drive down West Paces Ferry Road. Wow. And would say, you know what, one day you could have a house like this. Oh, wow. And so they gave me a, a vision for my life. Mm-hmm. So I knew that the situation we were in was just temporary. Mm-hmm. And then the very first job I got was uh, at the airport, Atlanta airport. And I think I was in the 10th grade. I might have been 16 years old. And I was a janitor. It was a wow. summer job. Huh. And I remember seeing all these mostly white guys uh-huh. going, uh, uh, hopping on airplanes and they had suits on, you know, and I was like, man, where, where are all the black guys? Yeah. And then I said, you know what? I want to wear a suit one day uh-huh. and I want to be able to get on an airplane. Yeah. So my point of bringing that up is I've never let my environment mm. uh, shape how mm. I thought about life. I always had a vision mm. and would strive for more. So what I could have been is uh, on drugs Mm -hmm. because a lot of my friends were doing Mm -hmm. drugs or into crime Mm -hmm. or just being mediocre. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I've never, never been satisfied with just being average. So a couple of these movies are are pretty, uh, you know, gun bang them shooting up, you know, kind of (laughs) movies. The Scarface and Untouchables like stick out to me, you know, Mm -hmm. as these these movies that have some pretty big violence in them are. Mm -hmm. Saving Private Ryan, obviously, is is American kind of, you know, the, the, the true story of World War II, of that kind of heavy violence. But but to me, it, you know, I'm not talking about really the, the value mm-hmm. of violence or not violence. But what I'm interested in is it seems like there's this kind of uh, underbelly, uh, you know, Al Capone underbelly kind of thing going on that uh, is your fight, the character's fighting against. You got Blood Diamond where this is this underbelly of the diamond industry that's being fought against. 
Um, what do you think about that? What, what, what kind of comes to mind as far as something that's important?